So right now I'm going to be machining a 6.8 V10 Ford cylinder head. And so I've already removed the valve guides and I've started putting new ones in. So that's where I'm at in this part of the head rebuild. So I put a little bit of penetrating lubricant on there. That just helps me push the guide in and then I get no galling as I uh, as I punch that in with a hammer. So I start with a small hammer to get it to closer to where I want it to be, just for just so I don't break a valve guide. And then once it starts getting a little tougher, I use the 40 ounce hammer. So as you can see that little aluminum round piece that I put on the the guide installer, that one is set at 600 thousandths. That's what the head requires on the extrusion of the valve guide. So that's just kind of a, a little cheat because I'm doing a lot of these motors so I make little tools to make things easy. So when I know it's flush on the top, I know I'm good. Now I'm going to be moving on to uh, actually cutting the seats. So I flip the head. Or in, right now I'm going to be um, rimming out the valve guides to make sure that the valves have a perfect fit. So this is some really cool stuff that I have. I really like using it. It's kind of like a paint in a way. Easily removes with brake clean or whatever cleaner you use most of the time. And so you can use it to scribe lines on parts and all sorts of stuff. In this case I'm using it as a uh, paint to put on the seat so that I can see where the cutter has cut on the, on the seat itself so I can know if I need to go deeper or anything like that. So this I'm setting up to uh, know how where to set the tool for my three degree uh, three angle cutter. So this is kind of like a transfer gauge. So I put the point not on the edge of the valve hat but a little bit off of it I'd say about 60 80 thousandths you don't want I'll explain that in future videos on setting that you don't want it right on the edge you want it a little bit in on the valve So then here I'm going to use a pilot. I put that into my transfer gauge. And then here I'll show you this is the three angle cutter that I use. <clears throat> so this one is a 45 degree seat cutter with a 60 degree flat on the valve seat. So then it's a 30, 45, 60 degree. And I'll explain that another time. There's a, there's a lot to this stuff. So then I move it so that my seat can, uh, the, the cutter is right at the point where I want it. And then I lock it in place. This is a leveling tool, a lot like your lumber leveling tool that you buy at Home Depot or whatever. It's just got a curved glass in there to make sure that it's 
perfectly level. Stuff like this, there's there's really no room for slack. It's got to be perfect. So I slowly lower the quill, the spindle onto it to make sure that it's perfectly centered. The pilot guides the tool and then in later videos I'll show you the spindle just all it does is move the tool. But really the pilot's the what the, the piece that keeps it in place the best, the most. So I start off slow, but then I'll speed it up in a bit. And so then I'm going to make I'm going to go down until I start cutting my 45 degree angle. It'll be hard for you to see it, but it cuts three angles into the seat. That improves the flow and it makes sure that your valve gets a good seat. So right now it's cutting the 60 degree angle, and as it goes further down, right about there, it starts to cut the 45 degree angle where the valve seat is, in, where the valve hat comes in contact with the seat. So I finished doing all the intake valves. I only showed two of them on the video because it really just starts to turn into the same thing over and over again. So now I've already set up my tool for the exhaust. And so I'm going to get those cut right now. So this machine uses an air float, and I really like it because it's super easy to move this giant cast iron spindle, and then it makes makes it so I can easily align it onto the onto the guide. So these uh, these heads are notorious for really wearing out exhaust seats. Especially for this one since it's set up on uh, on natural gas, it really eats up the seat. So half the time I actually replace the seats on these heads. But this one I didn't have to. So that's why it takes so long to cut that one. It's because the seat was just completely wore out.
So this is the end of today's video. This is the best part, looking at how shiny everything is before it gets filled up with a bunch of carbon and looks gross again. Thanks for watching, and I'll be doing another short video next time on valve grinding.